Hey there guys. Uh, bit of a mixed intro this one actually because it's sort of covering quite a bit of ground but um, first off I must say um, thanks to Adam, Chuck, Harold and who else? One or two others I think. They've uh, shown some video of the Bar Z Bash and uh, <laughs> that was one heck of an event. As I've commented to one or two, I'd love to have been there. Uh, it's a long way to travel for me. Um, cost, of course, is a factor. But probably most of all, I don't think I can sit in a plane for more than about 20 minutes and then my back goes stupid. And seeing a lot of folks standing around, again, a bit of a problem. But it was nice to see the flavour of it, and it looked like one heck of an event. <laughs> Well done, Adam, with the uh, Forge or Chuck competition. That was great. All right, so the main subject of this might be an absolute joke. And I'll tell you why as I go on. I'm going to do a bit of handheld just to get up to speed here. Um, well, first of all, this is not really in sequence. I wasn't going to document this at all, but I have made this little fella, I haven't finished yet, um, and in fact I'll explain more about that in a moment. I wanted to get a high torque motor for the uh, Z-axis on the Grizzly, and I ordered one from you know where, Chinky Land, and it was actually, it looked bigger, I didn't look at the dimensions actually, but it looked bigger than I thought it was going to be, which is rather small. <laughs> it, I mean, there it is. I mean, is that small or what? Now, what's going to be interesting here, this might be it's absolute hiding to nothing. Before I get something with a bit more size and potential power, like a wiper motor type of thing, um, I'm going to see what this will do. To that end, I've made this piece, and that is going to be, I'm going to mill across here to get four spikes, shall we say, to make it into a drive dog, and this end with a set screw, if you can see it, I don't know, yeah, you've got a set screw in there, so that goes on the motor drive shaft, and the whole thing I don't know how it'll be mounted if it even works. And that's going to go onto the top of the uh, Z axis lead screw, which has two slotted lock nuts, which is why I want to make uh, do a bit of milling across here to get um, four engagement spikes, pins, shall we say, for, to make a drive dog. So, <laughs> you, you might be laughing already because that puny little motor doesn't really look capable of anything. But when I fit that to the shaft and have it running, it's 12 volt. In fact, I've got a 13.5 very hefty transformer, which if I set up a, some rectification and smoothing on it, will do for a fairly good power supply. This doesn't take a lot of power. You're almost talking milliamps, but um, the reduction ratio is if I remember rightly, it's 588, near enough 600, and it runs at 9 RPM. It's going to go eventually through a control board for speed, if it actually works. Um, so I'll show you where it's going to be fitted, and uh, we'll move on from there. <laughs> we'll see what the hell happens. <laughs> All right, I've shown this before two or three videos ago. Um, the whole of this cover is, um, I guess, contains the bearing housing and this is the uh, take-up adjustment, two identical nuts there for a sort of C-wrench, C-spanner. So that piece that I've made, let me get it. So this piece we've bored out to uh, an ID that is equivalent to the 
diameter across the inside of each slot. And then the OD is basically the uh, OD of the nuts, which is 28mm. So by the time I've cut some teeth in that, it should drop down and engage in these slots. Now this top, of course, is these are lock nuts. Um, I don't know whether there's enough grip on that one to, uh, seeing as it'll be rotating in the upward direction, whether that'll come loose. If it does, I'm probably screwed. But uh, the initial thing is to see if um, to see if it'll work at all. I'm just put that somewhere. I'm just trying to see. It's pretty hard to turn that by hand, but if I put a um, a small wrench on there with just about an inch away from it, uh, it's fairly movable. And the motor is capable, I think, of about eight kilograms per centimeter per square centimeter. Well, mind you, that's I'd have to convert that to pounds. But we're going to give it a try. Well, here's what we're doing. I'm cheating a bit here, just trying to get a quick result. Um, the uh, rotary table, I've perched it up on the vise because I'm too lazy to set it up on the table. That's all right in itself, but um, being a cheapy import, although it's locked round the back here, there's a tendency for this corner to move very slightly, so I've put this clamp on here, about the only place I can do any clamping, and that stabilises it a bit. And uh, the idea here is, fortunately, the distance between the side of that peg and the bore diameter is very close to 3 eighths. So what I'm trying to do here is take 3 8 passes until I get down to depth, which will be about 240. And then we'll come this way and repeat the process this side. That'll give us hopefully two pegs there. And then we'll rotate 90 and take off the rest of the material in that plane and see if we finish up with anything approximating what I'm after. And I'm still thinking that little motor's never going to make it, but I just decided I'll give it a try. I, I can't take very big cuts because uh, the whole of this assembly, <laughs> you know, there's an awful distance here down to the table, so it's just light cuts, cheating a bit really. Let's uh, take another small cut. It's not overly happy being so high up, but now I'm set up on it for uh, dimensions and everything, I'm stuck with doing it that way. Incidentally, I made, uh, you may or may not remember, I made some cheap, uh, not cheap, I made some cheap tea nuts for this, but because of, they were 5 16 bolts, they're a bit big, so I've made some little, uh, little tea nuts now with um, quarter twenty socket cap screws means I get them in further that's relatively much better so I'm going to carry on it's very tedious and see if we can come up with what I'm looking for here I should probably have modif modify this uh, little rotary table to stabilize the corner that was proving a slight problem. Plus the fact of course the deeper I go here I'm doing a lot more side cutting and that's putting much more stress on the system. Uh, I stopped at 150. I don't know why I would think about bothering to get down to 240 which is the depth on the nut. 
Uh, I think this will be quite enough for engagement, so uh, we're going to bring this back and repeat on the other side. Right, that's basically it. A lot of rather light cuts. As said before, this is not a very advantageous situation from a stability point of view, but <clears throat> the only way I can think of doing it, really. So, it doesn't look too bad, except we've got loads of fuzzies to clean off, so I'll get out the uh, needle file and do a bit of clean-up. Well, I knew that 3 8 cutter was just a smidgen less than needed, but it was convenient to do the uh, cross cuts the way we did, and we're more or less we're more or less sitting okay. It's not. I've probably got a little bit more to tweak on it. It's not too bad. So it was only only a thou here and there really. So the next thing is to see whether the motor will burn up <laughs> or do nothing. Probably the latter or both. I did forget to mention I wasn't giving it probably the total voltage. It will take over 12 volts, it's a nominal. Uh, I was only taking it off this uh, gel pack which has not actually got a monstrous charge on it. So I think maybe if I have uh, the power supply that I envisage for whatever I'm going to use, it'll probably be pushing out about 14 volts at high current. So a little extra voltage might help that little motor if it survives. <laughs> if. <laughs> okay, well as expected, I think it'll take the column down. Let's just do it that way, if I can get at the battery. Yeah, it'll cope that way, but uh, pulling it up, nope, <laughs> as I thought, not really enough torque. I'll just try again, but I doubt it. Well, it does. <laughs> it does. But it, it works very hard. I wouldn't want to run that too long in that direction. So there we are. I wouldn't say that was a waste of time because I think if I can use this drive dog <clears throat> on something else, probably be a wiper motor. <laughs> I mean, what, what does anybody expect from something as tiny as that? Eh? It's ridiculous. The fact that it will actually pull up at all is pretty amazing. Just feeling the. Uh, uh, there's no obvious warmth in there. I would think the motor might might burn out if I did too much of that, and it's uh, struggling so hard to get any speed up. So I think the answer is, as I say, a bigger motor of some sort. But at least you saw the production of the dog. I put an actually put um. I did put a witness mark on that because this this nut is actually not very not very good for symmetry. I forget which way it went now. That just complicated matters. There you are. That's the way it goes on. So the lack of symmetry didn't really help the uh, the build. Anyway, there we are, that's it. Another weirdo bit of gadgetry from the old shop. Uh, as I usually say at the end, or often, what's next? Do you know, I'm not really quite sure. Something in the back of my mind. Oh, I've got to start the acute sharpening system soon. Uh, that's going to keep me tied up on and off for ages. Alright, anyway. If you lasted this long, thanks for watching guys. See you soon.